So the photographic evidence, the Apollo astronauts took lots of photos. Mine roughly one every 50 seconds when they were moving, every 50 seconds when they went uh, setting up experiments. No time to do anything else. Well, again, this is covered by the test one, accuracy. These calculations are based on questionable, pre questionable premises, such as how much time would be encountered against other activities and how long it took to take a photograph. For example, a panorama of 12 photographs could be completed in about a minute. And plenty of photos were taken on later missions while the astronauts were driving around in the lunar rover. The film and the camera would have survived unless the temperature changes between being in direct sunlight or the shade. This is covered by expertise. The cameras were coloured silver, silver to reflect sunlight, and experts recognised that inside, in a vacuum inside the camera, the film was insulated against temperature change. And as being fogged by radiation, again, expertise says that the uh, level of radiation on the moon is low enough uh, to not protect the film. How did the astronauts take so many good photos when they didn't have a rangefinder? There's 10 experiments. See how hard it is to take photos without a rangefinder while holding your camera against your chest. Uh, and incidentally, there are plenty of poor photos. They just don't get published that often because they're poor. The TV transmission that was supposedly halfway to the moon did show blue sky outside. Well, this is covered by implications again. If Apollo 11 was orbiting the moon, uh, orbiting the Earth at the time it was supposed to be halfway to the moon, it would have been visible in the sky at night, the same way you can see satellites at night these days. And look at what brighter than most satellites are these days. Are there evidence that they didn't go to the moon? Why was Hernan von Braun in uh, Antarctica? Well, the implications. Why would you send a rocket engineer to collect rocks? And why would you do it so publicly? Wouldn't you send a geologist and tell them to be quiet about it? Astronauts speaking out. <coughs> Gus Grissom wasn't uh, behind 11, not on the command module, but on the simulator. And that was because it was constantly breaking down uh, and wasn't keeping up modifications to the command module itself. Jim Irwin's suspicious death just before he was about to spill the beans. Well, there's no evidence for that. Uh, so it's covered by test 7, for lack of evidence. Um, no one can prove what he was about to do. There is no evidence provided except an assertion by the particular exploiter. The engineer who, was, who uh, blew the whistle and was later killed uh, in an accident at a level crossing. This is covered by alternative explanations. Why would you kill the engineer after he gave the evidence? You haven't stopped him from giving the evidence. NASA feels obliged to meet the challenge of this uh, assassinated President Kennedy, and on top of that, faking the moon landing gave the USA the appearance of technology and superiority over the USSR in the context of the Cold War. Test 2, relevance. NASA could also meet Kennedy's challenge and assert American technological superiority by actually going to the moon. <laughs> if it was possible to do, the Soviets would have done it. Um, they had a moon landing program that dropped it. Well, this is covered by consistency. If it was impossible for the Soviets to go, they could have announced this and didn't they demonstrate that Apollo was a hoax. But they didn't. The, uh, that the Soviets didn't go, rejecting the idea that the Soviets didn't go because coming second wouldn't look good, that it didn't stop the Americans on our coming second, again, covered by a test too, relevance. The Soviet Union and the USA had different motivations at different points in the space race. The idea that um, the Soviets would have known if the Americans had faked it, and if, if so, the Americans probably bought um, Soviet cooperation by bribing them with these sites. Again, it's covered by the implications. Why would the USSR go along with an American plan to provide the USA with propaganda, um, uh, propaganda benefits at the expense of the Soviet Union? And uh, requiring us to believe that the uh, Cold War was a serious as it claim it to be, which some hoax believers uh, challenge as well. Again, implications. Um, if you're going to question the reality of the Cold War, then you're going to question most of the world history since World War II. And the equipment could have been landed on the moon with um, unmanned spacecraft. Again, evidence. There's absolutely no evidence that this ever happened, or that, no, that such missions ever happened. And finally, why is it taking so long for the US to get back? I mean, they did it eight years back in the 1960s. Again, this is relevance. The current program is funded at a much lower level, and it's a project with much less priority than Apollo had in the 1960s. 
So the conclusion is that the ten tests I've outlined has clearly shown that the Apollo moon hoax theory makes no sense. It uses arguments which are factually wrong, arguments which are irrelevant, arguments which require swathes of history and science to be wrong, arguments which are mutually inconsistent, which contradict the knowledge of experts in relevant fields. Some arguments are actually opinions rather than arguments, while others offer no supporting evidence or fail to address alternative expert or positive evidence um, to the contrary. Many arguments can be tested with simple experiments. And finally, the arguments don't offer a coherent alternative explanation for the events otherwise described in detail by the official version of things. The tests can be applied to other conspiracy theories, whether the Kennedy assassination, the events of September 11, 2001, or the theory that the Chinese treasure fleet sailed around the world in the 1420s. And if you have a conspiracy theory which you think is genuine, I encourage you to challenge your beliefs by, by applying tests to it. Uh, and remember, scepticism is not what about not about what you believe, but how you decide what to believe. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I dare say there might be some people who might have some questions, so if you have, um, please ask. Yes. You mentioned uh, the story that a satellite would disappear very quickly. If all can go around the thing. In fact, how would you explain the geostationary satellites that are used for uh, the uh, broadcast of television, etc.? You're suggesting that we, instead of uh, bouncing signals off the satellite in low orbit, we uh, use satellites which are in higher orbit. The, the problem remains that you have to have the, well, the satellite dishes were accurate, could be very accurately pointed, and you have to track the, the signal source. In the case of Apollo, the, sat, the satellite dishes tracked the moon as it crossed the sky. If you have a, um, a satellite in the geos, uh, geostationary orbit, um, it orbits the Earth at the same speed that the Earth turns on its axis, and so the satellite remains in exactly the same spot permanently. Uh, you can't have, uh, so you'll be pointing the satellite dish at this point in the sky as the moon goes across the sky. And that would be immediately a matter of suspicion of the satellite, the, the dish is pointing in the wrong direction. And frankly, there is no height at which you can have a, a, a satellite orbiting the Earth such that it remains permanently between the Earth and the moon and thus have the satellite dish in the right place. Any time it's in the right place will mean it's got to be, uh, it'll move across the, uh, the face of the moon and very quickly the dish will be tracking the satellite that's on in front of the moon and again that will give it away. Uh, it would be, but then you have the problem of signal delay. If you're going to bounce a signal, it has to go something like three quarters of the way to the moon and back again uh, to transmit from Earth to the astronauts supposedly on the moon. And the amount of time that would take would be longer than it would be for the signal to go straight from the Earth to the moon. I'm assuming that NASA has the amazing technology to keep such a satellite perfectly in line at the low range point. But, and here we actually uh, Right, I'll reach another point that uh, is of interest, and that's that the Apollo moon hoax partly relies on NASA being completely incompetent and in, unable to land a spacecraft on the moon, but at the same time, amazingly brilliantly able to pull off a hoax uh, that um, people have generally not been able to, um, to penetrate for 30 years after the moon landings. <laughs>